Hey guys and welcome to another melee focused episode of Let's Max Warframe where today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new weapon to a class people have forgotten about because it's terrible and that's the new Gazelle Machete. Machetes have been long the forgotten class of melee with terrible or distinctly average weapons in it combined with the worst stance of the game. So what's changed with this new machete to try and change that perspective? For the base damage of 52, that's the highest of any of the machetes. The majority, 39, comes in the form of slash. 7.8 is puncture, 5.2 is impact. In addition to that, its supplemental stats have a 10% crit chance, 200% multiplier. It does put it in the range of a blood rush body count build being effective here. As crazy as that sounds. And its 25% status chance is damn good, meaning that you're going to proc status a lot. Especially if you combine that with Weeping Wounds, and especially if you look at the 1.08 at uh, attack speed, it works really well with either Berserker or Prime Fury. In fact, when you look at the paper stats, it's hard to see much wrong with it, other than the base damage isn't really the highest. However, the problems start coming when you look at the stance, uh, because in my opinion, it's the worst stance in the game. I hate it with a raging passion. The whole stance is clunky, extremely awkward looking and only has one combo that even has real damage multipliers on there to boost the damage of the weapon. The worst thing is that there's not even a choice of another stance, something that should have been done a long time ago now. But there is one thing to cheer me up a bit. This comes with an interesting mechanic and synergy to it, which is that for any enemy killed it will add corrosive damage to Jin's next radial corrosive burst from, uh, from fatal attraction. And every time Jin uses fatal attraction, it will add corrosive damage to the Gazelle Machete for a period of time. It's tough to get any actual feedback as to what is going on, how much damage stored or how long you get the corrosive buff on your weapon for, because there's nothing in the UI that even tells you anything. But it is a pretty cool and actually a seriously interesting mechanic. So let's see it in action. Oh, wait. Okay, let's try that. Oh, okay, now it's back again. Oh. Well, now that we've shown that's working, let's move on to the build. Like most weapons, I have two different builds for it, and like most weapons, the crit build is by far the strongest one. The weapon comes with a built-in V polarity already, so I only needed to add two Vs to it. In that, we've got the stance, obviously, Sundering Weave, then we've got Prime Pressure Point, Blood Rush, Body Count, Berserker for attack speed, Organ Shatter for crit damage, Weeping Wounds for status chance increase with the combo counter, then one dual stat, one 90% elemental mod. Should put you about 100% status at something like a two and a half or three times multiplier. It's a really strong crit build. Um, I mean, I mean, it's a standard crit build to be honest. It doesn't actually do too badly. It's not insanely strong, but with Naramon running, you can see I'm actually shredding through things fairly quickly and fairly easily, just like. Any, but then I would do with any crit weapon, so it's not completely pathetic. But the second build kind of is, and that is the way that I'm sure it's probably intended to be modded. Prime Pressure Point, Prime Fury, Body Count, Weeping Wings for the status chance, Buzz Kill to weight those procs even further towards being mainly Slash. Then I have two dual stats and a 90% Elemental in there. This will hit 100% status with Weeping Wings super quickly. You could even drop the second dual stat for another 90% if you wanted to. This is going to be personal preference. Damage output from this build though is it's pretty pathetic. You can see in the footage from the Undersea Tile set, it's not really killing that quickly at all, even with Chroma's damage buff. This is an option for the build, but quite frankly, the crit build combined with status, absolutely the way to go with that. So do I recommend the weapon and think it's worth maxing out? The answer is no, not really. Wish I could say that I think it's worth it. The idea of having weapons that synergize with Sentinels is something that personally I think is pretty cool and actually fairly interesting, something I've been accusing melee weapons of not being recently. But the thing is, what is the point of tying our weapon buff to a Sentinel that can't take any hits at higher level at all? Soon as the Scorch shows up, it's dead. A couple of Eximus do their AoE, dead. Bombard, dead. And you know what that means? No more buff, that's it, gone. It's back to being another bog standard melee weapon again just because the only thing that made it interesting, that synergy, just died. Seriously, what is the point? I could overlook the crap stance, the fact that the damage output isn't that good, because I really like Jin, and I really like the idea of the synergy between it and a weapon. The extra corrosive damage trade between yourself and Jin isn't that bad when it works, and gives a weapon a bit more of an edge in higher level content. 
The problem, like I said though, is that Jin survives 5 seconds in high level content, the point at which this buff would actually be useful for that extra bit of damage. Sorry, but the carrier thing and vacuum, this last week, it's so over talked about. Because people are missing one of the biggest points about why Carrier Prime is so much more used than every other Sentinel. It's not just because of its vacuum, it's also because of its survivability. It has good shields, great health and armor, giving it way more effective hit points than any other Sentinel out there. Hopefully that people now are trying out the other Sentinels again, people realize the vacuum was only half of the problem. The other half is that the other Sentinels last 5 seconds in higher level content before they are gone for the rest of the mission. Personally, I think it's time for a Sentinel 2.0 because right now they feel antiquated in the way they're modded. Kubros, Kavats, they've got Link Health, Link Shields, Link Armor directly working from the frame itself. Sentinels don't. It gives Kubros and Kavats insane survivability on something that can be revived indefinitely. Whereas 90% of the Sentinels have less than 1100 hit points in total, have one total revive, cannot be healed by anything other than healing Peters, unlike Pack Leader that heals Kubros and Kavats. As I say, Vacuum was only part of the problem. Hopefully people will now realise that there was more to everyone using Carrier Prime than just that. Apologies for how salty and ranty it got towards the end there, but it's getting frustrating how people, how blinkered people get over a single issue. Instead of looking at the core problem, people want a surface fix. Carrier Prime issue went far beyond just vacuum. And while I like the fact that all Sentinels have it, albeit at a reduced range, it hasn't done enough to solve the core problem, which is that the other Sentinels are just not that attractive a prospect to use. I mean, the weapon though, like getting back to the point of the video, if you have Jin alive and it's doing its thing, it's kind of cool, and the weapon looks badass because it is a giant kukri, which is the knife of the Gurkhas. Which, the problem is, like, when Jin dies, it's pretty often, it becomes mediocre and boring again. It's a standard, it's another standard crit weapon once Jin dies, and it happens all the time. And honestly, I don't think I'm going to be using it very often, to be honest. Feel free to leave any comments or queries in the comment section below. I will respond to as many as I can. Probably going to be streaming some Armored Warfare tomorrow with Fiora again, so feel free to join in for that. And as always, feel free to hit that like and subscribe for more gaming content, and I shall see you in the next video.